All right, some breaking news today, Ed. You broke the story that uh, Churchill Downs race meet is now moving to Ellis Park. Quite the story. What do we know? Well, we knew that there were 12 deaths at Churchill Downs, starting with Wild on Ice before the Derby, following a workout. And we know that HISA was here this week. As of yesterday, it sounded like they were going to address the issues with uh, some purse supplement changes, uh, incentives, things like that. That all got thrown on its head today when we learned that the meet starting late next week, Saturday, June 10th is the date I heard most often, is going to move to Ellis Park, which is in Henderson, Kentucky. You actually get there through Indiana, though. It's about a two, two and a half hour drive. I have heard that Churchill is going to uh, give accommodations to trainers to help with travel expenses and things like that. And of course, it goes well beyond that. I mean, as you and I know, and I know you celebrated a birthday, not you personally, your yeah. birthday, but you celebrated yesterday yes. at Churchill Downs. Uh, this is a big deal, not only to the track, but the city of Louisville to basically lose all of June and the first part of July at Churchill Downs. Right. But primarily this was done because of... Uh, a lot of reasons, right? It was it, it partly the PR, uh, you know, obviously uh, the horse deaths um, sort of unprecedented. It's created a bit of a national PR firestorm. Uh, it also buys time to look at the track. I mean, is there any feeling that uh, the track at Churchill Downs has any issues? Uh, you know, I, I did get a text uh, after the story broke saying, if it's not the track, why do they need to move? And then Dale Romans on our own Ron Flatter Racing podcast told Ron that it's not the track. He said that very forcefully. He mentioned how his wife, Tammy, rides a lot of horses in the morning and is very quick to note any issues, that she never thought it had anything to do with the track. Horsemen are a focal group. Never really heard from any of them, to be honest, that it was a track issue. But it's certainly a PR issue. I mean, we knew that it was even at the halfway point of the, the current total of horse deaths. So uh, maybe that's usurping and uh, it does give them time to, you know, they'll be able to look at the track more closely. Right. Two of the breakdowns have been on turf as well. I'm not saying right. there's anything wrong with the turf course. One was a paddock accident. Two were heart attacks. So understandably, I get why a lot of people would say it's not the track, but it's certainly an issue. Everyone's talking about it. And this gives them a little bit of a pause away from the Twin Spires. Right. So, okay. So as far as moving the races to Ellis Park, so is it sort of like Churchill Downs racing, uh, the same races, the same purses, the same horses and jockeys? That's uh, what I'm told. Uh, you know, we have not gotten a statement yet from Churchill Downs, of course, uh, in the manner of our reporting. We did try to contact several people there, have not heard back. So we'll eagerly await, I'm sure, something coming from uh, either the corporate and or racetrack office. But from what I was told that the book meaning the condition book, which lists all the eligible races, is staying the same, including the purses. Uh, now, one thing that the dots have not yet been connected officially, but one thing going on in my head when I hear, uh, based on the recommendations where they said, well, we're not going to pay down to last anymore. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do trainer starter incentives, things like that. And they did note in there that they're going to find another use for that money, right. which is the horsemen's based on, you know, purse agreements, et cetera. So I could see where that money will now be shifted toward, you know, travel costs to get to sure. Ellis, stabling yeah. issues, things like that. But yeah, purse wise, everything remains the same. And if we're looking as far ahead to the end of the meeting when they have Stephen Foster Day, maybe there'll be a grade one at Ellis Park, which has never had a grade one race. Wow. They had a derby prep a few years ago. They did. COVID, <laughs> but uh, it was there that day. That was pretty interesting. Um, okay, and then we should know that Churchill Downs owns Ellis Park. Yes. Also owns uh, Turfway, Turfway Park yeah. in Kentucky. Was there any discussion of moving the race meet to Turfway that you know of? Not that I know of. Uh, my, my sense, I shouldn't even say guess, but, you know, with them wanting to keep the condition book intact, right. so to speak, uh, you have Turf Ender at Ellis, whereas Turfway is uh, exclusively the synthetic tapita right. surface. It'll be interesting too, what sort of, uh, you know, a lot of the trainers based at Churchill have supported Colonial recently, and that was expected to continue, if not even grow with Churchill Downs right. and Colonial as well, it owns Ellis. It is gonna be interesting to see what sort of, uh, you know, if, if people are having to shift to Ellis, do they just right. try to stay there then? Because now they're there for the summer, they still gonna go to Colonial. A lot of questions still to be asked. Churchill also owns press style downs in right. Erie. So it has plenty of race dates, 
Uh, of course, the ones in different states can't use these purses, but it does have options to try to make trainers whole. Right. And Churchill has three race meets every year. The week before the Derby, the first Saturday in May, it goes to early July, a September meet that's brief, about what, <laughs> 10 days, 12 yeah. days, and then basically the month of November. So as things shift around, who knows what even happens right. uh, with the September meet or, or beyond. I mean, I, I would definitely say, you know, as of right now, this is a, a, a fix for through June, early right. July. Uh, but obviously, September is going to be a, a big question mark until they, you know, confirm definitively. Yes, we're we're back racing in September. And again, I would point to, you know, I think a lot of people may not understand, uh, especially if, if they're in areas where their tracks maybe aren't as supported with an on-track crowd. The Derby gets 150,000. I'm not trying to say the rest of the Churchill meet is anything like that. But those Thursday night Twilight cards, Saturdays, groups come out. It's a big deal, and, and this is a blow to Louisville. Right, no, right. And as you're kind of saying, a lot of families, companies, gatherings uh, uh, will be canceled because of that. Um, that is that is tough. Um, as far as the decision itself, and, you know, we were kind of speculating when we started about <laughs> or I said it was PR reasons and different things. But um, do we know, was this Churchill's decision or was this coming from HISA, the new Horse Racing Integrity and Safety Authority? Maybe a combination of both. Do we know anything about that? I mean, I have to, yeah, the decision itself, my expectation is that Churchill Downs is going to own it, um, which, which you would expect as they should. And, you know, they're the name on the marquee. Uh, it's certainly curious that we had the, you know, press conference after the, the closed door meeting with mm -hmm. trainers. They came out with, hey, here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're trying to address it. They definitively said the track is not an issue and that mm -hmm. all participants were comfortable with that. This is a pretty quick 180 on that just right. 24 hours later. So uh, I, I have to think there were discussions beyond just internally at Churchill Downs. I would I would say that the decision, they're ultimately going to own it. But, you know, Heiser being in town this week, I'm sure. And not only from a standpoint of, hey, is it safe? You know, those are obviously questions that need to be asked. But Heiser also brings to the table uh, not that Churchill doesn't, but it, it's a third party, uh, right. you know, a, a different voice to listen to. You know, they're, they have people on staff familiar with PR issues, right. uh, both within racing and without. So uh, that's right. important to Churchill. I mean, we know their brand of that. They keep saying it over and over when it comes to the Bob Baffert thing. Certainly it applies here as well. Yeah. And we know uh, HISA is a new organization. They're charged with making racing safer and, and creating more of a level playing field everywhere. So obviously they're wanting to be vigilant. Um, and then on the racetrack thing, you know, we've been around racetracks the whole life. I, I've, you know, got to work on the front side, maybe back side a little bit. And, and uh, you know, agree with you. Everything that we've kind of heard is that the track is safe. And by all indications, that's, you know, really, it, it's sort of been a blip on the radar with some of the different reasons why some of these horse deaths, horse deaths occurred. But you don't want to bet on that, right? You don't want to bet, <laughs> even if you're 98% sure it's not the track. Uh, at a certain point, we've, you know, right now, because of the safety of the horses, uh, you know, the numbers gotten pretty high. You know, I think it does make sense to kind of uh, turn the page. Let's get on a fresh track at Ellis Park. Give them the time. Anyone that they want to bring in, the time to examine the track at Churchill. Yeah, and, you know, for better or worse, Churchill is the racetrack, uh, you know, if not the country, even the world, uh, one everyone recognizes home of the Kentucky Derby. And when this happens there, it definitely leaves open, you know, more uh, investigation into other tracks as well. Belmont Park had a breakdown this week and PETA released a statement about it. And I'm not sure that happens if this hadn't happened at Churchill. Now, right. if it's Belmont Stakes Day, yes, yeah, a big day, a lot of eyes, but we know breakdowns occur anywhere, anytime, uh, hopefully not with a lot of frequency, but they do happen. And, you know, the fact that there's been 12 at Churchill, not all breakdowns, but 12 deaths, I think definitely leads to situations where on a Thursday at Belmont, then all of a sudden it's a story when it may not have been. Absolutely. And uh, so, look, and, and on a positive note here, um, you know, I think it's been fairly amazing the strides the industry has made in uh, lowering the, the amount of horse deaths and, and uh, casualties on the track. And uh, just through, um, you know, data and technology, 
Um, and I think that's sort of uh, been missed in the story of this crisis. But uh, some of the technologies out there that's amazing of, of the scans of the, the stride analysis and different things. And uh, I think we're going to see even more of that. Even maybe, uh, you know, we've talked about using our database and artificial intelligence to dig into uh, some of the patterns, if there are any, uh, on some of the horses and tracks and, and different things. Right. But, uh, it's really come a long way. Yeah, no, and, and I encourage everyone that, that can to listen to Ron's podcast because I thought Dale showed a lot. Dale Roman showed a lot of candor, and and he and other trainers uh, I I spoke to personally, Dale on Ron's podcast, and then trying to find more information about this. Some other trainers at Churchill, they're frustrated because they they do love the horse, and I and I, and I believe that. Like you know, and, and Dale said on Ron's podcast, look, maybe other people are in it for the money. But you don't work the hours trainers work and come in on right. Christmas for the money. You do it because you love the horse. And, you know, to a to a man and woman, everyone I spoke to says that. And they're frustrated because they kind of feel like when stories like this gets out, that's downplayed and, and people just kind of roll their eyes in the general public. So uh, I do think the strides have been great. And I do think this is a, a rare instance in the industry where people are coming together, wanting it addressed and willing to listen to solutions and implement them if they'll work. This is an extreme one, moving a marquee meeting. I mean, I would say, you know, Churchill, we know it for the Derby at the front end, but it's great racing through the end of the meet. Uh, moving it to Ellis is a huge step, but, you know, the, the stock price has gone up, up, up for a reason. And, you know, leadership has pushed a lot of right buttons and uh, they think this is the right one to push for right now. So. I still plan on supporting it because I play Ellis anyway. So my right. only request would be, please do not change the track code. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want Bach a situation at Ellis. The e Beck. ELP keeps it. We know where it is. The Belmont at Aqueduct. Yeah, code. yeah I, didn't, I didn't like that as, it's, as a you're player. You're talking about like. Equibase and through the tote betting, it's like created another racetrack or a fake racetrack. Basically, kind of right. And then on top, you know, the, for yeah. what we do when you're looking at trends or whatever, and, and yeah. you know, for the people we have that help us out, they know the fix. But, you know, for just a casual person like me, it makes it like it's a whole new track, which it's, yeah. to me, it's not. I mean, the Ellis post position data going nine furlongs doesn't change because it's the right. Churchill book. So right. it's a ELP. Book becomes a data problem. Right. All right. Well, like we said, hopefully uh, some positives will come out of this and, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll turn the page to Ellis Park. It should be a good meet there. And uh, hopefully I uh, will very much improve safety at uh, the remainder of the meet there. All right.